last week, Netflix updated its company culture guidelines to include a warning to employees that, quote, you may need to work on titles you perceive to be harmful, end quote. The warning goes on to state, quote, if you'd find it hard to support our content breadth, Netflix may not be the best place for you, end quote. Now, you may recall that last fall, there were protests over Netflix's plan to stream comedian Dave Chappelle's stand-up special, The Closer, during which he makes allegedly transphobic comments such as, gender is a fact. Might the updated culture guidelines be indicating a movement back toward neutrality for companies who have been watching the backlash over Disney's woke activism? Joining me now to talk about this is Justin Danoff. He's the head of corporate governance at Strive Asset Management. Justin, welcome back to the program. Hey, it's always great to talk with you, Joseph. Well, I'd love to hear your reaction to the, the, what was your reaction when you saw this Netflix memo? What does it mean in the larger debate over the corporate role in the culture wars? Yeah, it's a great development, right? Because we think that corporations are going to achieve the best level of success, both for their customers, consumers, and their employees, if they stay focused on their mission. And I don't think that Netflix was founded with a mission to be a voice on every single political issue of the day. My guess is they were founded first to crush Blockbuster, which they did, but really to focus on content, right? To be the greatest content generator that you can. And now not everyone is going to agree on what the best content is, right? But what we have seen in the last you know, couple of months and really in the last few weeks is I think corporations are starting to wake up to the idea that focusing on all of these externalities is something of a distraction from mission. So we think that companies that are going back to focus on their mission are really doing a great service again to their customers, but also really to their employees and to use the, you know, the, the parlance of the day, all of their stakeholders will be better off if companies stay focused on their, their original mission. Now missions can be updated over time, but again, I, I think that a lot of these externalities that fall under the banner of ESG, we can think of them as a luxury good that while everyone's getting fat and everyone's making money, sure, you have time to spend on all of these external things. But I think if you're looking at Netflix and you're looking at the reduction in the stock price as people are you know, struggling, everyday Americans are struggling under the current economy, right? And you decide, am I going to buy food for my family or keep these 10 streaming services I have? And Netflix is being chopped left and right. And I think the company's looking at the, you know, the quarterly reports and saying, hey, should we spend, you know, $250,000 to bring in Robin D'Angelo to tell us all that we're, you know, <laughs> white people are racist, or should we focus on our content? And we think that a lot of companies are cutting out um, these externalities when they realize that, you know, the times are a little bit leaner because businesses have to make decisions on budgets just like families do. And I, I, I'm starting to see a trend away from a big push on a lot of these ESG issues. Now, Justin, of course, these companies do exist to make a profit. You mentioned the, the hit that Netflix has taken, recently reporting the first uh, decline in subscriptions. Now, how much of this do you think is financial? How much of it do you think is, is kind of a, the principle of who we want to be as a company as they watch what happened to Disney, for example? Yeah, I, I think that there's fact, multiple factors at play. I do think the overall macroeconomic problem facing, well, frankly, the world, but the United States specifically, uh, with our with our inflation just running rampant with no signs of, uh, of stemming, I, I think that that plays a part in it. And I do think that Disney's a very prominent example of, look, if you go too far, um, there are certain government actors and consumers that are just going to push back. And I think Disney took uh, you know, a couple of steps too far. Look, you don't go after someone's wallet and you don't go after their children. And Disney went after children. And that's where I think that again, if, if you know, I were a larger investor in Disney, you know, like I, I think BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street are still the biggest investors in Disney. You can, you can fact check me on that, look that up. But we'd have a simple message, knock it off. You've gone too far. You push, you're alienating your, your customer base. And look, 
Now there's political actors that are also taking action because you've just gone way over the edge. So I think, you know, Disney is is a warning case for other corporations. But what we need to see, in my opinion, is more investors stepping up as well, not just consumers and saying, hey, where are you, why are you going this in this direction? This is Jeff, not Disney's mission. Yeah, a, a related development that seems perhaps related, a PR firm has recently told some of the nation's largest companies to stay neutral on the abortion issue uh, in light of the Supreme Court leaked decision that seems to suggest Roe versus Wade is going to be overturned. Is all of this a trend back toward the middle from really what we've seen in recent years as a really hard swing left for corporate America? Well, it might be the beginning of the beginning, okay? <laughs> right? there, there's still a, 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 strong, a strong tilt um, to the policy left on a, a wide array of issues. And again, that stems from a capital markets problem where you know, the biggest asset managers in the world are still pressuring on these ESG issues. But I do think that that was wise advice uh, uh, from the from the PR firm. Um, look, th this isn't even a final decision yet. And again, you tell me, other than Planned Parenthood, what company was founded with a mission to snuff out human life, right? right. To 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 be focused on the issue of abortion. I can't think of a company that was founded with that mission in place. And so again, we would tell these companies as an investor, like, look, this isn't your mission. This isn't focused. You're not focusing on your customers um, and just knock it off. Stay out of it. Justin, and I think a lot of companies are hearing that message. Yeah. In about 30 seconds, what effect do future consumer choices have in these decisions by the corporate world? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, look, you, you, you can look backwards at your last quarter. But when you're looking at pinching pennies because you know that your costs uh, of your inputs are rising, absolutely everywhere I, I and in the near term we're going to see costs continue to rise there's absolutely no abating that's going to happen and so yeah these companies are, are forward looking and again they're both backwards looking Justin and seeing Dow. what happened to Disney and forward looking i've got to cut you off because we are out of time greatly appreciate your time today we'll talk to you soon thanks so much